eyes are the windows to the soul, but uh, the penis is the window to the cardiovascular system. This is directly from the Times article. Uh, <laughs> using stem cells, using other kind of regenerative therapies to help improve skin, hair, sex, everything we care about. We draw, I draw the blood, spin it, centrifuge it, get the platelets isolated and concentrated. And the platelets have all the growth factors. Growth factors are important for healing uh, of all different parts of the body. So PRP has been around for 30 years and we, it's well known and well used. So micro needle leak on both of you, which is a you know, little device, little needles go up and down really fast. And they basically create these little channels in your skin that I could use to apply this, the PRP and exosomes to get those deeper in. They just soak it up. They just soak it up. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to deliver those, those therapies deeper in the skin. So we're trying to kind of just perk up your skin a little bit, you know, get better blood flow, give it mm -hmm. more of a glow, help with fine lines, texture tone. Using your own body to heal, like that's something that's a passion of mine and I love that I can now know more about this, this side of it too. It is, uh, it is I, Evan DeMarco, here with my lovely co-host Jana Breslin, who looks like she just spent a little bit too much time in the sun. Yeah, it looks like you spent a little too much extra time this Sunday. Yes, and we owe all of this look to the <laughs> incredible Dr. Amy B. Killen in the house. You're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> it's all for the good, right? Like, we, we go through things for the greater good. For so. the greater good. Yeah. We are going to unpackage so much today. Uh, you know, uh, so I, I don't even know where to begin, except you have to introduce yourself because mm -hmm. people need to know who you are. Um, so I'm Amy Killen. Amy B. Killen. Amy B. Killen. That's my rapper side name. <laughs> um, I am an anti-aging and regenerative physician here in, in Utah. I work in Park City and in Salt Lake City. And I do, uh, I kind of specialize in skin and sex. Uh, but I do a lot of other things as well, hormone replacement and some of that as well. But using stem cells, using other kind of regenerative therapies to help improve skin, hair, sex, so Those sorts of things. Everything we care about. I know. All, all the, the important things. stuff. All the important things, yes. Because <laughs> we are a vain people. Um, <laughs> there's there's so much more that you do. I want to talk a little bit about your history and how you got here. Because at one point, you have such an amazing history. And, and, and I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but talk a little bit about you know your ER and then kind of how you got into sex. and, and, and <laughs> <laughs> From ER to sex. <laughs> yeah, like God. I was like... <laughs> It, it, keep in mind, people. You know, she. We'll talk a little bit about what she did to my face, but my tongue and my lips are numb. So I, I we're like, both a little numb uh, right now yeah. on our faces. I've so. got numb tongue. We're trying to enunciate the words. Enunci Can you understand the word that? I so give give us give us a little bit of background. Yeah. So I was an ER doctor for about ten years. I did emergency medicine. I was re as re residency trained in the ER. Went out, worked in the in the ER for a long time. Um, towards the end of that, I just I had just like tons of of stress and like my life just sort of was like imploding on on me like I felt like I was like I was you know like making bad decisions eating junk food not exercising s never sleeping you know sleeping like three hours a night and then I had three kids in two years I had twins and then I had another one like 20 months later and I had all these kids and I was working these crazy shifts and um and then just it was all these things happening my husband had moved away and like we weren't doing very well and basically it was just like all like it became too much for me. At the same time, I started realizing that like patients were coming in to see me, and and they were having the same problems. Like they were also like going crazy, and like they're you know they were making bad decisions, and their health was suffering, and they were anxious and depressed, and this and that. Um, and they would come into the ER asking for help, and I would be like, I don't really have you know many tools to offer you, and also I only have five minutes to see you, so we're a you triage know, we, center. we don't have time. Um, so I would send them out, and so I realized that in order for me to help my patients really, uh, and then also to help me, I need, needed to learn about some of these sort of longevity medicine, anti-aging medicine, functional medicine, you know, kind of all these integrated medicines um, so that I could, you know, make a difference for them and also for myself. So that's kind of how it started. Can that's uh, awesome. Would you be willing to share the life story? The lice story? Yes, oh, I yeah. love that lice? story. Yeah. Yes. Lice. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. Lice. So the lice story is, so during all of this this time where it's just like, I'm like just kind of trying to survive like minute to minute, um, my my two daughters at the time who were like three or four had this like long blonde curly hair and they both got lice at the same time, which, you know, happens for kids. Yeah, whatever. a lot, right? So we tried to treat it several times and like kept, it kept coming back and it was just like the stress, you know, whatever, we could keep getting lice. Um, and so we hired this lice like fairy, this like lice whisperer. Lady. <laughs> 
which is like a real job. And, and, and she was super nice. So she comes to our house. And wait, she's wait, hold on. <laughs> I want to make do you sure. Un- do you want to unpack the lice fairy a little more? I, ju- I just want to make sure that at some point in the future that we interview a lice whisperer on the Life to the Max podcast. I just podcast. did not think this is where we're going to go in this conversation. <laughs> I'm like a little shook right now. <laughs> this is great. So we hired this later lady, lady and she comes to our house and she spends like eight hours like de-licing my, my children. Yeah. And then she tells us that we need to do lice checks like the rest of the family on each other like every couple of days to make sure that we haven't you know gotten lice. Um, and so I have this I have this very sort of poignant memory in my head where I was sitting with my husband. Uh, we're on like the playroom steps and I'm sitting like kind of between his legs. He's like behind me and he's, you know, partitioning my hair, looking for lice mm-hmm. eggs uh, uh, and he's looking for lice eggs. And I had this thought that this was like the, the closest that we'd been, like the most intimate that we'd been in months. <laughs> And it was while he was looking for lice eggs in my hair, which, you It's know, amazing what brings people oh, together. I know. And I was like, huh, there may be a problem here. Um, but that kind of got me thinking about, uh, you know, just how health affects, uh, uh, you know, sex and how sex affects mm-hmm. health and sort of how it all kind of goes together. Um, and that was just one of the moments, though, where I was just like, okay, I got to make some changes. Like, this is not, this can't go mm-hmm. forward <laughs> like this. It, so that's how you're inspired to start. It's, yeah, start it's one of the things. There were many, you know, many, like, little mm-hmm. stories like that. But, like, basically, I just kept, I was just losing sort of touch with m- so many parts of my own health, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, including mental and emotional and spiritual and sexual and physical and, like, all the things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was, I just decided, like, I got to, I got to get out. Like, I got to do something else. Mm. So. And so you started uh, shortly after, after, you know, your journey into regenerative medicine, you know, so really kind of looking at things that were outside of the scope of traditional Western medicine. Um, you started injecting penises. Um, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> right into it. And, and this was a segue quite candidly, ladies and gentlemen, to a, a procedure that I had earlier today, which is called the, the pee shot. Right. Um, and, and that accompanies gains wave. And one of the things that I really like to hear you talk about is kind of the canary in the coal mine philosophy and, and how, you know, uh, erectile dysfunction for men can really be a precursor to a lot of other issues that really lay dormant for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we talk about, uh, about, you know, ED as being like this canary in coal mine because we see um, problems in like whether it's atherosclerosis or chronic inflammation that are causing problems. Um, we see those those problems in the penis before we see it in the heart or the brain or other organs. Um, and it makes sense if you think about the, the, the blood vessels that are supplying your body, they're, you know, obviously they're everywhere. And as, if you get plaque buildup or you get atherosclerosis buildup, the blood vessels that go to the penis are much smaller even than the ones that go to your heart or your brain. So that little bit of plaque is going to affect blood flow to the penis before it affects your heart or before it so affects, affects your brain. So the first telltale sign. So it, yeah, so you may be getting erectile dysfunction because of lack of blood flow. Um, and that's only one of the reasons for ED. There are many other ones, but that is, you know, in a lot of, in a of men, we talk about that. Um, I really like talking about sexual health as being, you know, in order to be sort of have this you know, good sexual health, you actually have to have positive, you know, input from all different areas of health, you know, everything from physical health, again, to mental, emotional, spiritual, social, environmental, um, all the kinds of health kind of come together in sexual health, which is why I love it because it's so fascinating to me. Right. Because they all come together to make you sexually healthy. And the other, you know, sort of on the, yeah, the backside of that is that, that having sort of a healthy sex life actually also kind of gives back to all those areas. So it positively impacts, Mm. you know, everything from memory and mental health to your emotional health and, you know, depression to multiple different things in physical health. So it's like this, like amazing, like, (laughs) right. There's so much more to it. (laughs) I don't don't know if I told you, I used to be a pharmaceutical rep and I, my drug was Cialis. Oh, uh I worked in the pharmaceutical industry as a Cialis rep for two years when I first moved to San Diego. But just like what you said, said like you don't just slap a bandaid on it or just like throw a drug in there to ha- I mean yeah it's a whole encompassing thing it is that helps there yeah. so I, I hear you yeah I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> she hears me I hear you so so let's talk a little bit more about that right because I had the pee shot um you just had an incredible spread that came out uh spread <laughs> yeah not not in you know in my boudoir, your boudoir, boudoir shoot, shoot. yes. Um, 
in the Times from London, right? It was that yeah, it was the Times magazine in the UK, which is a big magazine in the UK. I was there for the Health Optimization Summit, uh, which was a big a big conference that was happening, and I was speaking, and I uh, and I ended up getting to do this this interview and photo shoot and all of these things. Um, I believe it's called a spread. It was, <laughs> <laughs> and I might, and I might be wearing like a short dress and laying on a bed. I don't know. I you can't. Might. I, can't <laughs> I don't. I might be. I can't remember. But um, is it a yellow dress? It, it might be. <laughs> it might be a yellow dress. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely a fascinating article, right? And, and congratulations on it, by the way, because I think, you know, you have been one of the pioneers in looking at sexual health um, as a precursor to all of these other areas and really what you just talked about. Uh, but one of the fascinating things that you said in there is that 40% of men in their 40s will uh, end up with erectile dysfunction. And I think it's like 50% in their 50s, 60%. Oh, and we're starting. Listening. That's right. What was that? You were listening. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh my God. Uh, so <laughs> we talk about some of the procedures that you do um, consistently here, and, and I'd like to bifurcate these and look at you know how much of this work can be preventative versus how much of it is really trying to fix an, an already established problem. I um, mean, yeah, there's a there's a huge amount of prevention that you know, and the educational the educational piece is enormous, and that's why I do a lot of speaking and podcasts and things like that because I think you know not everyone can afford stem cells and, and even like gains wave and things like that. Uh, right now, it, it's not available to everyone, but everyone can do the preventative stuff. You know, everyone can work on the the lifestyle changes that cause inflammation. You know, the sugar high sugar diets, the obesity, the not exercising, the stress, the not sleeping, like all the things that we know are bad for us are are horrible for our sexual health and for our sexual organs. So there's so many things, you know, just in that prevention um, category that I think everyone should be doing, you know, whether or not there you have, you know, sexual concerns or not. You know, I, I talk about, I think it's important. I feel like we all do like sex ed, you know, like you have sex ed, like when you're what, I don't know how old they are. Fifth grade. It's really like, young. I, yeah, I know it is really young. Yeah. So you have sex ed when you're really young and you learn about like preventing pregnancies and preventing you know, sexually transmitted infections. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. Like, there's never any other, like, sex ed. I feel yeah. like we need, like, further, like, we need actual further sex ed, like, maybe, like, so sexual right. health ed. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. let's like let's mm -hmm. keep that discussion going beyond, mm -hmm. like, that little fifth grade classroom where everyone's, like, too nervous to, like, even, like, ask questions. Well, totally. it, and it's funny how much of a integral part sex is in all of our lives um, and how little attention is paid to the education process, you know, piece of that. Like you said, it's like, you know, a two-hour class when we're in fifth grade, and it's like, this is where babies come from. You know, right. this is how you put a condom on a banana. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, even things like, you know, smoking or diets or how all of that, um, you know, really leads to a sexual, can lead to a sexual dysfunction. Yeah. So we talk about the education on the front side. Now, how much of this treatment, like the P shot, you know, getting PRP and stem cells and exosomes uh, injected and the gains wave technology, which um, just to let you know, it's like basically having someone jackhammer your penis. But <laughs> not in a bad way. It sounds like it too. <laughs> how do you turn that into a good thing, right? I, like. I, it's or, not. It's not necessarily a painful. Please, please drop a comment on it's, that one. It's not really a painful thing. No, it's not. It just sounds because bad. You, because you're you're numbed up with yeah. lidocaine. Yeah. Um. But it, I mean, so so how much of that can actually be preventative for guys who are interested in you know really looking at some therapies that might help prevent erectile dysfunction prior to their 40s, 50s, and 60s, where maybe some bad lifestyle choices in the past had led them down a road where atherosclerosis, which, to my understanding, really is irreversible, right? It's not completely irreversible. There are some things that are that can potentially help, but yeah, it's not something that is easily reversed. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I think it hasn't been really been studied. I will say that. So things like gains wave or shockwave therapy and stem cells in the, for sexual health haven't been studied for preventative purposes. But it makes total sense that they would be helpful because we know that what those things do is they they increase. Um, they sort of repair regeneration. So you're increasing blood vessel formation and blood flow to the area. You're increasing, um, you know, you could potentially regenerate nerves. We've seen in animal studies, um, it can improve the health of the cells in the penis, the elastic cells that as you get older, they become, they become like scar tissue or fat cells. They're not elastic anymore. So you can't get an erection. You can't keep it because it's, you lose that elasticity. Um, so some of those things we've seen from studies that these therapies can reverse some of those um, sort of changes. And, and so it makes sense that if you could you know, kind of get ahead of the curve with some therapies like this, like the shockwave therapy or the P-shot, um, before you're really having a lot of dysfunction, that that would be helpful. I have a lot of patients who are in their, you know, 30s, like, and don't really have problems. They don't have dysfunction. They're just like, you know, I want to, like, keep this thing, like, working. <laughs> <laughs> keep the train on the tracks. We got to keep this thing going Let's strong. keep this thing going strong. Yeah. And even those people who don't really have problems will come back and tell me, 
this actually helped. Like, they can I have, still benefit yeah, from it. Yeah, they're like, I actually have more sensitivity mm-hmm. or I feel like, you know, ev- that, that I'm having more pleasure or, you know, like w- things are h- lasting longer, they're firm or whatever. Like even people who don't really have problems, they still are, are they're still not 18 years old probably. Like they still, it, things still change and they still know benefits a lot of times. So thank you for that. Um, now, obviously erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction in men is a lot easier to pinpoint, right? It's, you know, this worked, it didn't work, you know, let's, let's look at fixing this. Uh, but obviously there's a lot of sexual dysfunction in women that you treat as well. And, and the I was just going to bring this up. And the, yeah. the counter to the P shot is the O shot. So we have the O, the O shot is sort of the trademarked name. That's, or, or you know, we do kind of a variation of that because we're not using just PRP. We're actually using stem cells or exosomes generally as well. Um, so it's kind of like a souped up um, version of it, a little bit different. But yeah, but I mean, sexual dysfunction in women is just as common and just not as talked about. Um, Why is that? Right. I, I think it's, t- I think for, re- I, for, I think for a few reasons. Number one is there haven't been good treatments. So, you know, if you have, if you're a man, you have ED, you can go to your doctor, say, I have ED. They'll give you some Cialis. You got your Cialis <laughs> yeah. rep coming in with the blue pills Here we and go. the white pills yeah. and the whatever. Um, so there's a, there are good treatments out mm-hmm. there that may, aren't, they're not perfect, but they, they can be effective for a lot of people. Um, but for women, you know, the pharmaceutical companies haven't really found great treatments. There are a couple of drugs out there that are mildly helpful mm-hmm. for some women, you know, but you also can't drink alcohol while you're on them and you can't do this and you can't do that. And it only, you know, it's like, there, it's like all these like things that they don't make them all that effective. Mm-hmm. So there's not a lot, haven't been a lot of treatments. I also think it's harder to, for women to like, to tell, like sometimes they're like, mm-hmm. they think that they're normal or they're like, ah, this is just how it is. Like I'm supposed right. to, I'm just supposed to kind of suffer and not enjoy this. Well, and not really like physical telltale signs. Yeah, like yeah. if a man can't get an erection, that's like, okay, there's a sign there, but yeah. for women, it's just, you don't get, you don't have that. Yeah. So women know. are also very used to like, just like grinning and bearing it. Like, just mm-hmm. like, you know what? Just, okay. I'll just deal. Like it's totally, you know, they take care of everybody else in their lives. And this is not to say that men don't, but like women are very much these like uh, they, they tend to not focus as much um, on themselves sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think it's just harder to, it's harder to pinpoint, you know, women, sexual dysfunction is, it can be a whole slew of different things mm-hmm. that are causing it. Um, and it is harder to see it sometimes, mm-hmm. but about Absolutely. 40% of women have some kind of sexual, sexual dysfunction at any given point in time. Right. So, you know, 40% have either lack of, you know, lack of libido, arousal problems, orgasmic problems, or pain, or some combination of those things. And that's like almost half of us at some point in time mm-hmm. are, you know, are having problems. So it's actually pretty common. So when we talk about the O shot and what that does, or, or kind of, we'll call it the killing shot. Uh, <laughs> and every time you use that, I get a nickel from here on out. Right, right. The that's kill, how it works, right. The be killing shot. Um, <laughs> so when you talk about that in the form of, you know, treating sexual dysfunction, or I, I know that it treats a lot of other things like urinary incontinence, things like that. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. But I before we jump into that, I kind of want to take a step back and look at, you know, what you just said as far as, you know, women have kind of been conditioned to grin and bear it. Is this, does this signal a shift in kind of our understanding that women should be enjoying sex as much as men? And is kind of that part of what your platform is to, to at least... I mean, I hope so. I hope that's my platform. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hope that's one of my platforms. Well, we've been so conditioned in, in especially Western society, and whether that's, you know, movies, porn, whatever the case is, is, is that it's, it's very, a, it's very much a male centric sexual society. And, you know, I right. love some of the things that we've talked about in the past is kind of reframing that argument that, you know, women, you know, it, it's it's both, right? It's like we all have the right to pleasure in, in the bedroom or the kitchen or the car or wherever, you know, people do it these days. Um, <laughs> so, but I, I love this concept of reframing it and, and so that sexual dysfunction is, is not something that you just have to suffer through and that, that there are very viable treatments for this. Yeah. Yeah, and there are treatments, I think, that are there are safe, that can be very effective, that use your own body to heal itself, and that are not sort of a Band-Aid approach, you know, mm-hmm. to 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 it. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm definitely, I use, we use a lot of Cialis and Viagra and all those right. medications And I'm also. definitely not saying it's wrong Yeah, either. no, and I use that in combination for mm-hmm. a lot of people. We do, you know, combination things, and I, I think that it can be really helpful. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, it would be even better if we could get the people, you know, patients, men and women, to use their own bodies, to heal themselves, to not have to rely on other, you know, medications or things right. out there. And that's something that I found so interesting is you are using literally your own body to do these procedures. You're taking out blood, you're spinning it. Do you want to go through the process of maybe how that goes? I mean, yeah. So for the O shot or for any of these PRP injections, so PRP, it's the B killing shot. Play, like, yeah. The, I'm sorry for the B killing shot, female <laughs> version. <laughs> there's, there's the B killing. I don't know if I that mean, works well for, for men. There's, there's so many, like, it's I'm going to be, be killing your penis. It's gonna be, <laughs> 
I mean, it kind of feels like it, right? <laughs> I, and it was, that, that wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't bad at all. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't bad at all. Um, God love lidocaine. <laughs> Gosh, I forgot where the question was. I'm sure that there was like something about Run PRP. us through the procedure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. Drawing blood. Um, so we draw. I draw the blood, spin it, centrifuge it, get the platelets isolated and concentrated. And the platelets have all the growth factors. Growth factors are important for healing uh, of all different types of the body. So PRP has been around for 30 years and we've, it's well known and well used. And then we'll, com- we'll often combine that with um, stem cells, either from the patient, like from your your own fat, um, you can use bone marrow, um, or I, I use a lot of exosomes as well, which are the little sort of messenger bubble growth factor um, things that help. Uh, to and you get exosomes from that better. same uh, blood that you just spun. No, the exosomes are coming from uh, umbilical cord stem okay. cells from a from a, right. like full term baby, like placenta. That's then they culture expand or you know culture the stem cells, grow them out in a lab stress them, get the exosomes. And the exosomes um, are great because I don't have to do a procedure on you to get them, Mm -hmm. but they essentially seem to make the other procedures, like they they, they have the growth factors and they even can change the way that your cells are uh, producing proteins and things like that to kind of almost make your cells act like more youthful cells. So we, I use that with the, with these O shot, <laughs> killing O shot, <laughs> killing ABP, <laughs> killing shots. <laughs> this is going to come. Some, something's going to come out of this. <laughs> totally. Uh, um, so, so you do that now for, for the men, obviously it's, you know, you're, you're injecting that directly into the penis and, and, for me, I believe it was six different spots. It took so many. I had to go get more syringes because. <laughs> <laughs> There's absolutely no way to respond to that. So we're just going to. Yeah. yeah. So for the men, I'm injecting the, the corpora cavernosa, the sort of the tubes that are like on the top that are that fill with blood when you have an erection. Um, and then I also do another injection at the corona, which is kind of like the tip, the base of the tip. For just women, the tip. I, for women, <laughs> for women, I'm injecting the clitoris um, as well as the anterior vaginal wall, which is kind of like where the G spot is. Um, so a couple of different injections there. And you guys have both had them. So. I know. I know. So that I know it happened. And Yay! Yeah, where's <laughs> my <laughs> high five? <laughs> I just gave you one. I was yes. afraid you were going to stick me with something else. <laughs> oh, uh, Another needle for the day. So, um, you know, we, we obviously we've we've got sexual function, we've got sexual dysfunction, we've got you know, for women, there's you know, urinary incontinence. That's that's obviously a big oh, yeah. one, and this can yep. be post menopausal, post baby. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we talk a lot about it, like you know, lifting weights can be, you know, well, I was, I was going to say, even not like I, I have not had a kid and that's something that I've struggled with in my workouts. I'm like, okay, well, what the heck? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I thought I had to have kids to have this happen and I haven't had kids. And so that's something that kind of drew me to that as well. Cause it's not only it helps sexually, but also just healthier in general overall. Right. And right. that is just fabulous that's awesome yeah the stress urinary incontinence which is yeah which is what we're talking about where mm-hmm. they you know you sneeze or you jump or you you know jump on a trampoline for some reason which right at this point i'm always like oh i don't know if i could do that but right. so what that, happens if you sneeze while you're jumping on a trampoline i mean it's just you, there you have very little hope at yeah. that point but you're yeah. gonna the, the, the urine leakage and you can and that sort of mild to moderate patient that doesn't need surgery but right. also doesn't necessarily want to have to like deal with that all the time right the things like the o shot or like uh vaginal lasers or radio frequency devices or, or even like pelvic floor strengtheners, like, um, like the intensity device, which I have patients go home with, uh, to strengthen their own pelvic floor at home can be, you know, amazing. And people don't even Helpful know that, that, you know, that those things are out there. A lot of them. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, and I mean, I know in the CrossFit community, I do CrossFit mostly and that's a thing that a lot of us women talk about there because we do a lot of jump ropes and it's, it, that is a thing there. And yep. it's, it doesn't matter if you've had kids or not. It's kind of something that it's a common thing in the industry that we've talked about. So I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll too. share with my friends. <laughs> Come to Utah and get there. the killing shot. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> no more jump rope leaking. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. It's a crazy world. It's so we've talked about sexual health. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the cosmetic stuff and this will segue into why we are both so freaking red <laughs> yeah you're more red than she is yeah. yes because you have so. beautiful young skin and i'm like <laughs> i did sean connery apparently but without a good accent and I, a lot less 
better looking, good looking, whatever. Um, yeah. So we did, uh, so we used some of those, say, the same PRP and exosomes and did um, some micro needling on both of you, which was in a little device, little needles go up and down really fast. And they basically create these little channels in your skin that I can use to apply this, the PRP and exosomes to get those deeper in. They just soak it up. They just soak it up. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to deliver those, those therapies deeper in the skin. The micro needling by itself, just the trauma of it, the, just the, from the needles also induces collagen production. So we're trying to increase collagen and elastin hyaluronic acid, which are all things that after age 25 start to go down. Like every year you make less and less, um, which is kind of a bummer. But so we're trying to kind of just perk up your skin a little bit, you know, get better blood flow, give it mm -hmm. more of a glow, help with fine lines, texture tone. And then for you, we also did some injections, um, which I, I think were a little bit painful. <laughs> and you guys are going to see that in the video that's going to be playing in the background. Yeah, here. we did some injections. Um, but, you were, not be but you were a tough guy. You were tough. Uh, so we did some little injections around your eyes and nasolabial folds as well as the microneedling um, all over the face so and then you injected my scalp and then I injected your scalp with the same little concoction the exosomes and PRP um, the scalp injections are uncomfortable right that yeah is, I that I was there for that and I'm sure we'll put a clip in where I was helping Oh okay. yeah, you were my assistant. I was the she assistant. Was, you were blowing cold air, and you did an amazing job. I loved it. It was great. But yeah, I, that <laughs> you were squirming a bit. That was yeah. really uncomfortable. I could tell. I, we I actually mean, oftentimes have our patients asleep for these procedures. Not necessarily just for my procedures, but we tend to do big cases yeah. with all of this. And so, right. and I found that I could, you know, that it's it's just a it's so much more comfortable when mm -hmm. they're asleep. The exosomes burn even more than the PRP does. Yes, they do. And so people who, you can do PRP, um, you know, pretty easily. It doesn't hurt that bad. But like when you start adding in other things, it does get a little stingy. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, as we're doing this, we're creating these micro traumas. We're kind of, you know, talking about rebuilding collagen. How much of this is cosmetic and how much of this is really kind of maintaining you know, healthy skin and, and facial and bone structure, you know, as we get older, is, is there really a outside of a cosmetic or shall we say vanity, a, you know, component to this? Is there a true health component to doing some of these procedures? I mean, yes and no. I mean, I think your skin, if you don't do these procedures, you're going to, your skin is going to do its job throughout your entire life. Like, you know, its main jobs are like protecting you that, you know, protecting your body from the toxins on the outside, you know, skin barrier function, things like that. Like you're not going to lose that. But, um, but yes, I do think that healthy skin, um, it, which is what we're kind of aiming for here, it, it, it can make a big difference in the way that we feel about ourselves and the way that we kind of present ourselves. Um, you know, I have a lot of patients who come in, like I have patients who are, they're scared of like losing their jobs because they're aging. And this is not something that oh, I'm wow. okay with, obviously. This is not a good thing, but I've had, you know, I've had everything from teachers to vice presidents to mm. uh, everything in between who they're like, you know, people are looking at me and they are, they're not respecting me like they were, you know, 10 years ago just because I'm aging, which is a t whole other problem. And I'm not saying that that is at all okay. It's not. But, um, but what I find is if we can give them back a little bit of sort yeah. of that youthful appearance without really changing, or I'm not changing the facial structure. I'm no. not doing, you know, not doing a lot of fillers or, or things that make them look kind of crazy. Um, although it they don't always have to look crazy, of course. But, but you know, giving them back a little bit um, of that youthful glow uh, oftentimes gives them uh, quite a bit more than just sort of the, you know, the vanity yeah. points. Interesting. A little more confidence and carry themselves yeah. a better. And yeah. I mean, it makes sense. So uh, actually, I actually have a question about um, collagen supplements. So do you, I mean, I take a collagen supplement. Um, it, would you say that is just as effective as going through these like microneedling? I mean, maybe not. I'm just going to, I'm curious about your opinion about that. I, mean, I haven't seen anyone compare, yeah. you know, collagen supplements, you know, orally versus PRP versus Probably this versus that. doesn't hurt to do both. But yeah, I mean, certainly yeah. do both. There's a, there's a decent amount of, of, of info about in there about using oral supplementation with collagen. Um, but it, you, it does require a fairly high dose. And I can't remember mm -hmm. what the numbers are, but mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it's quite a bit more than most of us get, you know, mm -hmm. with our like mm -hmm. one little pack of collagen day that we right. put in our coffee and we think that we're like, you know, fil building new skin yeah. like crazy. I think it's, it's, you know, yeah. multiple of those little packs a day gotcha. um, in the studies. But, yeah. uh, but yes, I think it could be helpful. Certainly, you know, certainly what you put in your body is just as mm -hmm. important, if not more than what you're putting on your skin and doing Absolutely. To your skin. Absolutely. Cool. So I want to pivot a little bit because um, we've talked a lot about the things that we've done here. And this is fantastic. And you guys are going to see so much of the video. You're going to see, you know, Jana's experience. You're going to see me cry a little bit. Uh, 
Um, I feel like you're not selling this. You're not selling this procedure. <laughs> you know, but there's going to be before and after where it's... You know. Fabio. Right. I mean, it's manageable. A little, little, you know, lidocaine cream. It I actually mean. wasn't that bad. And, and, and I think, you know, to, to a certain extent, it was kind of funny. We took a picture... And age is one of those funny things where we took a picture where we had our, you know, our masks on and our hair nets on. And so all you could see my was my eyes. I'm like, holy cow, I'm old. <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny, you know, um, even to quote you, because you said the eyes are the windows to the soul, but uh, the penis is the window to the cardiovascular system. This is directly from the Times article. Uh, <laughs> um, but, I, you know, my eyes were, you know, telling, you know, saying that my soul was old. So it's like, I, 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 I really like the... Uh, no, the, the, this was fantastic, right? And I'm I'm actually really excited about all of this, you know, especially kind of really looking at, you know, after the redness goes away. Uh, but I really want to focus on some of the things that you've been doing recently. And I know that you've kind of been in the midst of filming a documentary, uh, traveling all over the world, um, kind of really looking at some of the things that other countries are doing to, you know, in health and wellness and, and some of these innovative technologies. So talk a little bit about that. Because, I mean, this is the fascinating stuff that you get to do versus, you know, making me not look so old. Yeah. Uh, well, and so it's, yeah. We've, and thank you for that, by the way. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so I started doing a documentary. It's kind of shifted into a broader project than I anticipated. But um, but it started out, I was going to be a sort of a stem cell documentary, look at sort of what some of the other countries are doing in regenerative medicine and stem cell medicine that, um, that maybe we're not doing in the U.S. or maybe we are in different mm. ways. But so I had traveled to India and, and met with some doctors and did a whole, did a kind of some, did some filming there, which was amazing. Um, and of course, I've done quite a bit of filming in the U.S. Uh, and looking at some stem cell options here. Uh, but then I re started realizing that although I love stem cells, um, <clears throat> there are so many other things out there that, that other great tools that people don't always know about that we can use to make us healthier that are outside of, you know, the sort of the conventional medicine, um, or maybe they are inside conventional medicine, they're, they're just new, we don't know about mm -hmm. them. So I became interested in um, in learning about those things myself, and then and then maybe passing on that information to other people. So that's kind of where I am now, I've, you know, essentially looking at, um, <clears throat> you know, everything that's out there that's new and and that's pretty cool that can help us to be healthier that doesn't necessarily require, you know, medications or um, traditional treatments, um, but that are still very much evidence-based types of therapies um, and how, you know, who's doing those things, how does it look, who, you know, who's benefiting from it, um, how to make it available to people, things like that. So what are some of those? Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, did you find anything? Well, there's, I mean, there's so many things out there that are, you know, just like, I, I, I'm learning new things all the time, but I think some of the, like, big fields that I, I think are interesting, certainly regenerative medicine's interesting. I think that the plant medicines um, slash psychedelics are really interesting, and th that is being talked about, mm. but that, you know, the, um, <clears throat> everything from, uh, you know, psilocybin to MDMA and LSD and ayahuasca and ketamine and how a lot of those things are being used for, <clears throat> to treat PTSD and, and uh, depression and anxiety and addiction and all of that, I think is fascinating. Um, and I this is really kind of coming off of the heels of the, you know, um, how to change your mind and, uh -huh. and really looking at, you know, from the 50s and 60s, how some of these drugs, if we want to call them that, medicines were so effective at treating some of this. And maybe it's compliments of Timothy Leary and the Harvard issues and, and you know, right. the counterculture. But, you know, are we going to see a, an emergence of these in the United States or are you seeing these in other places, you know, whether that's overseas, South America? Yeah, I mean there there are a lot of there are some countries definitely that have uh, less strict rules. I know that like 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 uh, cannabis, for instance, and is Israel's doing a lot of a lot of work in cannabis, which mm. you know we that cannabis is becoming more mm -hmm. common here, but we still can't study it on a federal level um, because it's still considered to be a um, a schedule controlled one. substance. Yeah, sc schedule one drug. So, so you can you can study the like you can study it from a what's it going to do bad for you, which is not, I didn't say that right, but you know, you, you can study like the harmful effects mm -hmm. of it. You're allowed to do that, right. but you're not allowed to study the beneficial effects of it Interesting. Um, huh? in the United States, unless you have like, you know, some sp specific kind of uh, grants from the United, from the, from right. the U S government. Um, so it's fascinating because there's all this like anecdotal information out there about using cannabis you know, to treat cancer or, you know, or, or, ev you know, everything. There's so mm -hmm. many things out there. Do me a favor. I would love to, I would love to hear the story or I'd love our listeners to hear the story of the, the, um, um, cannabis doctor that you interviewed, um, and I think it was the bone cancer story, right? Yeah, I interviewed a few different cannabis doctors, and uh, and they all had like 
just amazing stories. Yeah, you know, I knew that cannabis was be- was being used for like nausea and you know to help patients gain weight when they're on chemo or like pain and or pain. Yeah. Like those were things that I knew about, and I was like, mm-hmm. ah, this is kind of an old story. Like, why am I doing this? But I started interviewing these doctors, and like, there are so many patients that they are they were using. The patients had essentially decided that you know, either they weren't benefiting from traditional medicines or they decided not to do them, that they started these high dose cannabis protocols um, that ended up, their cancers ended up, you know, essentially resolving. Um, and so that one of the stories that, that the, doc- uh. the doctor told me was of this, this kid um, who had a, he had a bone cancer, like an osteosarcoma and he had, it was like metastatic, it was stage four, like it was essentially they had, you know, he, he'd been given like three months to live or something mm-hmm. or six months to live. Um, he exhausted all of the other therapies, radiation and, and chemo and all that. And he was, you know, the those things had been done, um, but the, the, the family brought him to the cannabis doctor um, saying, you know, can you help his pain? Like he's clearly, you know, he's not going to, he's not going to make it, but can you at least make him comfortable mm-hmm. while he's going through this? And, um, and the doctor, um, Bonnie Goldstein is her name. She, she was like, yeah, we can definitely help with the pain and, you know, let's, let's dig in and see what we can do for the cancer. Cause it's known that, uh, that THC has a lot of anti-tumor effects. So she put him on a high dose protocol and long story short, the cancer is gone and now he's an adult and he is cancer free. What? Does that give you tingles? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Like, and there are a lot of stories like that. I mean, not, not, you know, I'm not, I would never say, you right. know, don't take your traditional medications. Like I'm an advocate of doing a lot, you know, integrative, like I'm, I'm Absolutely. pro Western medicine and I'm also pro other types of medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that that's a story that people just don't even, you know, they, most patients uh, who have cancer, they don't know that like this is something that you could add to your, maybe add to your regimen, depending on the cancer and what's going on, of course. But um, so those kinds of things, I think that, that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot out there in that field that's fascinating to me that, that, you know. It's right. The first time about. you told me that, and I th- uh, we must've been on the phone and you were telling me that and I'm like, I, I just started tearing up. Right. Cause you know, as a parent, you're like, mm-hmm. oh my God. And, oh, right. Yeah. 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 So you just want your kid to be com- you're like okay well if this is what's happening like we can't really change it but if we can just make them comfortable right that would be ideal and then lo and behold it's like 20 years a little later. bit more than comfortable yeah. <laughs> the guy's thriving that's yeah. amazing yeah it's, it's super incredible cool. so you're traveling the world you're d- uncovering all of these opportunities for for people to get better to get well, to, you know, to integrate Western medicine with, you know, the rest of the stuff out there, psilocybin, frogs, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, so where do you want to take this? What's what's the next couple of years look like for, for Dr. Amy B. Killen? I mean, I would love to make this something that, you know, getting the information out to people, information that is actually actionable, that they can, that they can take in and say, hey, this actually is, applies to me and is, is something that I am, I could go out and do myself. It's not necessarily like, it's not a clinical trial that I can't get into. It's not, you know, it's not something that's super expensive that I can't do, but like, what are some of these tools? You know, there's tons of cool stuff coming out with in light medicine, in bioelectric medicine, in, I mean, in some of these fields that didn't ever even used to be medicine, <laughs> like right. that they're actually, there's some really cool, um, advancements being made in these fields. And, and I think that it just getting that information out to people in kind of a fun way, um, could change, you know, could change a lot of lives. Like it could make, it could make people, um, just happier, healthier, live longer, et cetera. So I, you know, I would love to, to be able to kind of, kind of be like one of the messengers of some of that information. Um, but we'll see. I love that. We'll see how it yeah. goes. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. All right. Well, then how do we help you on this? Because th- this is this is a message. This is a journey that I think that, you know, the world needs to hear. And, and, and we talk a lot about this on Life to the Max. But our goal is to support, you know, people like you who are really making a difference. You know, there's enough doctors out there prescribing Cialis and not, you know, doing the other things. There's enough doctors saying, you know, chemo is the only option for, for you to recover for your cancer. So when we look at a, a true medical doctor who's gone through, you know, you know, being an ER doctor, going through your whole journey, you know, coming out on the other side and recognizing that there are alternative, if not complementary opportunities for us to really improve the health and wellness journey of all these people out there. You know, how do we get behind Amy B. Killen? Uh, I mean, I don't have anything actionable at this point, but, <laughs> okay. I, but I would, you know, I think that, um, Bitcoin? I we think can... you, Bitcoin. <laughs> you can pay me in Bitcoin. <laughs> she's taking, she's taking donations in Bitcoin people. <laughs> That's an inside joke from earlier. That right, no one's gonna understand. No, going to. Yeah, no one's gonna get that. Yeah, but the way that you guys are laughing, everyone's laughing right along with us. But 
I think that, you know, I applaud you guys for being, you know, being open to just going out and finding people who are doing cool things and then getting those, you know, getting the messages out about mm-hmm. what they're doing and, and, um, and making those things, you know, become more available to the public. So, you know, you're doing something very similar, I think with this podcast, uh, which I think is super cool. You know, it's Thank funny because I, 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 I had a lot <laughs> of experience with traditional journalism, media news. And, and one of the rules with that is if it bleeds, it leads. And that is the journalistic, you know, kind of motto. Um, and so we wanted to take that and kind of flip it on its head, right? It's, it's, there's so many great stories about so many people doing incredible things for the betterment of humanity, for our planet, for cleaning up plastics, for all of that. So that's the story that we wanted to tell. And unfortunately, by virtue of what you did to us, if it bleeds, it leaves. <laughs> So you've debunked our entire philosophy <laughs> by microneedling our faces. No, I, I, it, it, so we're for, gonna look so good, though. I know we're gonna look true. great. I mean, if you if you guys want for every podcast, I could come and microneedle you. You could be bleeding every time. You could be leading like weeping every blood. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, pouring. I, I think at a certain point it would be counterproductive, right? Like yeah, that yeah. much microneedling? Yeah. No, um, th- this is what we want. And, and, and obviously the goal of this podcast is to pair with like-minded people. You're one of those. Um, I'd love a little bit just to, you know, revert. Because, you know, you will find out Dr. Killen and I have been friends for a while. We met over cheese. Um, we did. We met over <laughs> cheese. We, we, we were at a medical conference uh, where it was all like paleo keto no it was yeah it was like the like virgin virgin diet um food where so mm. it was like basically you know no no cheese no soy no sugar no 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 bread I no mean, gluten like, no no fun and then so you guys it were was, like what is this where's the cheese and it so was you all go, the things. So we ate happen? like that for like three days and, we, and then by the last day we like snuck out to the pool and we're like you know what we need cheese a cheese platter plate. of cheese <laughs> yeah a platter of cheese so, so so since then you know I, I think we've been best friends and and in in doing that I've got to see some of you know, like this incredible journey whether it's you know speaking at Bulletproof Conference or A Fest or you know where you're at in London just now and, and this trajectory of your life has really been you know at first it was kind of doing p shot no shot and and not that that's all that you're doing but it's it seems like you've kind of morphed into uh this person person with an incredible passion to do so many amazing things so i, I want to support you in that we want to support you in that so if it's not bitcoin then we got to <laughs> find some other way to do that i will let you know for sure <laughs> okay um where can people find you uh, so I have a website, which is Dr. Amy Killen, uh, dot com, or I also have the Doceri Medical website, which is with a clinic here. Uh, and then I also have my other clinic, Biorestoration. I'm on Instagram. I love to post Instagram photos and stories at Dr. Amy B. Killen. Um, and if you can't find me there, then, then I don't know. That's probably Which, by the way, everyone here is so cool. All the doctors, like all the people you guys work with, I'm just like, yeah, they're, I could just be here group. all day with you guys. This is great. Yeah. So well, fun. considering how good you are with the cryo hose, you might, you, you know, know. You were good. You were, yeah. You were, and, natural. and you helped with the, uh, the blood I did. trans, the, the syringe transfer. <laughs> you guys. I put these guys to work today. I know. <laughs> you did. It was really fun. Was like, really fun. how much do you really want these procedures? <laughs> <laughs> So we can find you at all these places. We'll definitely put that stuff in the show notes. Um, we've got a couple like last, you know, questions, and, and these are the deep stuff that, that we really talk about. So I, I've asked you where you want to be in two years, you know, five years. What's the, what's the future like? So um, the one question we always ask is, if you could do one thing to make the world a better place, what would it be? Mm. Um, I mean, I would actually. It, it doesn't have to do with medicine so much, but I would change our climate situation. I would help in some way to reverse. Um, the climate change, the water pollution, the, you know, the, the global warming, like all the things that mm-hmm. I think are actually going to be our ultimate downfall. I would our water have is some sort so of sad. the water situation. Oh, is, like that's what kills me. Is really, is really bad. So I, I mean, I think that what I'm doing, I love, and I, I would love to keep doing it, but I think that if I could do something actually really big, it would be something like on a, like to actually level. save the world. Right. I mean, if I could actually save the world, <laughs> right. that's what I would do. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> is that what you're asking? Yeah. <laughs> You know, that, and that's that's the inspired part about this, right? Is is, is we all have to pay the bills, uh, but at a certain point, the evolution of us, the, the the trajectory change for all of us is is that we get to think beyond just paying the bills. And so, right. you know, what we do doesn't define us uh, for our job. What we do to to help the planet does. So, yeah. you know, um, so we would love to have you back on this podcast. Uh, there's just so much that we can unpackage here, and and and. Um, at a certain point, you know, I'd like to do this when we're not red <laughs> and I can feel my penis. Why not? 
<laughs> Same. That's not affecting this podcast. How do you know? Do you have a penis? Yeah. Jana can attest that he's been talking about this the whole time, that this is somehow affecting his ability to talk, and it's not. It is. It clearly is. You know, th- listen to well, some Well, you of- sit down next, you're kind of just like... Okay, well, this is new, but we're just gonna go. Yeah, we're just gonna go with it. It's just gonna be great. (laughs) This is gonna be good. Yeah. By the way, we've just we've completely blown past the family friendly (laughs) podcast. Do we? Were we trying to make it that way? No, not at all. I mean, not at all. But uh, you know, I think I ruined that on the first episode too. Yes, you did. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, uh, Dr. Amy B. Killen, thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. Thank you so much for letting us experience um, all of the amazing things that you do here. Uh, in Park City, Utah. Um, and uh, what else? What do, you, what do we got? Yeah, no, thank you for having us. Like, this is such a fun day. Yeah, I mean, we got to learn fun. all the things about all the things cool and regenerative and just using your own body to heal. Like, that's something that's a passion of mine. And I love that I'm, I can now know more about this this side of it, too. So it's so, so fun. Love it's, today. It's been a fun day. Thank really you, guys. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for everything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Life to the Max podcast with Jenna Breslin and Evan DeMarco. Make sure to uh, subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Please be, if you really like this, please leave us a five-star review, uh, which Amy B. Killen deserves at least that, if not a six. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. We'll be back next week.